What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. He's on the outside. He's on the It quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yes! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. And he got on the outside, comes inside, comes on the shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class. Burnley have done it, fantastic, Clarence deserved the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everybody and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast full-time show with me, Joe Redmond, Sam Emerson and Neil Layfield after a frustrating draw away at West Ham after the Clarets went 2 and a look. We'd have all took it at the start of the day, we'd have all took a point at the start of the day to be fair, um, but drawing the game in that manner, especially with some of the... the decisions that were made, and I'm not talking about the referee, uh, the referee seemed like it was actually on our side for once, um, was quite frustrating, but it's it's definitely points dropped. Yes, I'm happy that we have a point, but it, it's definitely, definitely a points dropped, and it just feels like the same old mistakes uh, are being made every single week. Uh, but get, get your comments coming in, let us know your thoughts on the match. Um, I'll read the best ones out as and when I can. The last few streams have been very busy, um, so we've struggled to get every single comment on the screen. But please do let us know what you're thinking. Gents, how are we? You two well? Yeah, no. Football aside, obviously. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> are you no. well? No, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, yeah. <laughs> Grandma, Grandma. I was really underwhelming that, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <I'm fine>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, expected. Uh, how was your shoulder, Sam? How was your shoulder? You look like you're well out of a sling now. Oh, loads better, mate. I can, you know, move it around. Yeah, I've seen you dancing when the... Um... Oh, yeah, mate. I love that intro. It's great, isn't it? I, it is, isn't it? I made that myself, mate. Obviously, I, I didn't I didn't, I didn't, compose the music, but um, I, I did make it myself. Oh, really good, uh, really good. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Get your comments are coming in. Raj Sharma says, same old VK again, baffling subs. We had a chance to win that today. It sums up our season. Mike says, good first off as usual, but it ends in disappointment. I never felt confident we would see the game out. We aren't equipped to defend for a full half. Well, a full 90, to be fair, because obviously a full half, Mike, we actually did defend quite well in the first half. Um, but then, as Raj says, uh, once certain substitutions and certain decisions have been made, we invite pressure. And shock horror, one of the worst defences in the league cracks when it's under pressure. Uh, David Gill says, yes, agreed. Why did he put Brown along? Was Bruin Larson hurt? There's been no confirmation of that, mate. Maybe he was. I, I, would, I would think that he wasn't. I just think it's a, a bad tactical change, uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, Yee says, went to the game as a neutral. for Fafana's goal was a uh, bleeping class, a well-deserved point. Uh, yeah, I think on the balance of play, a point is probably the best because we were so good in the first half and and, and so bad in the second. Um, but ultimately, we, we shouldn't really be in that position. But yeah, what a hit from Fafana. It really was a great goal. Sam and Ed says, lucky to get the point in the end. Yet another deflating game. would rather Court come on instead of Brownhill. Yeah. Uh, Colin McGlynn says, why can't we defend a lead? How many points have we dropped? Uh, quite a lot, mate. Reese James says, this is the sort of result slash performance that if we were 14th, you'd look at as unfortunate, but a good point uh, away from home. But after the rest of the season, it's so frustrating to throw it away. I completely agree with that. And yeah. when I when I get criticised on Twitter and stuff, like I'd be doing again today, that's the sort of thing that, that's the sort of mentality that I feel like these fans have because it, it should feel like that, but it doesn't because we're so bad. But we'll get into it. I'll get the boys' thoughts on the games in a second. 
uh, on the game in a second. Keep your comments coming in. I will continue to read out the best. Uh, but I just want to remind everybody that the, po- uh, the Turfcast podcast full-time show is officially sponsored by Wave Car Finance. Wave Car Finance are a local car finance company who specialise in getting you your dream car through their fantastic one-to-one personalised service. Their finance-first approach ensures that you can secure the very best finance deal in a deal tailored to suit you, and they can even settle any existing finance agreement and swap your current car into a new one. And to celebrate this brilliant new partnership between Wave Car Finance and Turfcast, if you mention Turfcast Podcast to them, they will give you a voucher worth up to £200 to spend at the Burnley FC Club Shop on completion of your finance deal. Right then, gentlemen, let's get into the game. I want to get your thoughts on the match. Neil, I'll start with you. Thoughts on that game then, mate? Um, Obviously, it's a game of two halves, that one, isn't it? I don't think I've ever seen a game as contrasting as that of how good Burnley were or how good a team was in the first half and how bad they were in the second half. And ultimately, only coming away with a point. Yeah, exactly that, mate. Um, So I was just checking I wasn't on mute because I had a bit of coffee fit. Um... Ordinarily, I think I've seen it in a comment. Ordinarily, you would think a point away from home at West Ham because West Ham are a bit of a weird team because they make out like they're, they're doing really, really poorly, but they're actually still up there. But um, yeah. away from home, ordinarily, you would take a point there. But at this, at the situation we're in is that a point, it might as well be a defeat, in all fairness, because we need three points um, because there's a bit of a gap falling. First half, great. Um, some hit from Fafana. It, it really was. What um, a goal that was. Yeah, what, Bonds, so well. Bonds at Spurs esque all them years ago, White Hart Lane. Yeah, and and uh, I actually thought it was even better than that because from the angle that I, the, the the first angle that I saw it, I thought he'd done a little trick to get past his man. But then when I seen the other angle, it actually bounced off his shin. So the build up play wasn't as good, but the finish <laughs> was absolutely beautiful. Um, and then we got a bit of luck, which is which to be fair is about time because we haven't had a lot of luck this year, uh, and we got a bit of luck to get the second one. And then you go in at half time and you think, you know what, Vinny's done well here. Um, because I know that I'm VK out and I remain VK out, but we'll not get into that. Um, but fair play at half time, I thought, yeah, he's got he's done he's done well here. And then I don't know what happened, it all went wrong, didn't it? Um, and then they scored, and then Sam, you mentioned in the group chat that as soon as they scored, that's it. Um, you just know, don't you? Just know they're gonna collapse, don't you? That soft yeah. underbelly that we've mentioned time and time again. Has just has just come back to haunt us, and it could have been worse if it weren't for uh, Ings' um, goal being ruled out. Um, it could it could easily have been a defeat. So it's points dropped, but it does honestly feel like a defeat because we need wins at this stage. And to go two 0 up um, and not come away with three points, it does just show that we just we're miles off what you need. But we knew that anyway. Yeah, I mean, we did know that. And to be fair there, uh, Sam, and Neil said how good we were in the first half and how bad we were in the second half. But he said at half-time, what Ooh. happened? Well, I think a lot of people, myself included, have been sort of like pointing at the substitutions that were made at half-time. Like, I understand for clarity that West Ham did make a couple of changes as well. Um, but we were doing so well, I, I don't see why mm-hmm. we have changed it. I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to shore up the midfield by bringing on an extra body. I, I get that side of it. But everybody with their salt mm-hmm. knows if you're doing so well and you're playing so well and your and your team is in full floor, you don't then change it. Why why is he then changed it and brought on somebody in Josh Brownell, who I do feel gets some unnecessary state, but so far this season it has been warranted because he doesn't play in his natural position, but he has been poor in that position. And then Vincent puts him straight back on in that position. And then, yes, he wasn't at fault for the goal that we conceded after 30 seconds, but that was a sign of things to come in that half. And I, I just I just don't know why companies changed it at half-time, mate. Honestly, I really don't. I think I agree with the reason, but we don't have the personnel to do it. Like, we... Yeah. We exactly that. teams can do that, and his logic behind it works. Like you're trying to share up the game, you're two 0 up at half time. The, the main thing to try and do is is hold on to the onto the lead, and, and 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 just go from there. See the game out and win the game. So he's brought on an extra midfielder who is more defensive than he is attacking, hmm. um, to try and do that. However, Josh Brownell is the whole conversation that we had last week is. Cullen should start next to Burge. Brownell, on merit, doesn't deserve to get in the team. So bringing him back on and trying to share it up with a player that we already didn't want to start and weren't really that bothered if he came on or not, especially in that moment, like not half time. If you bring him on in like the yeah. 60th minute and you still turn him up, it makes sense. But at half time, it's like like you say, like you're in you're in flow in one sta- in one way that's worked. You tune up, you you attacking football's working, the press is working. 
attacking, we're winning the ball back so well. Why throw a spanner in the works and get somebody off the bench to try and catch up with the pace of the game and understand how things are going? It, it, it is just baffling, but like I say, I, I, I West Ham were rattled as well, weren't they, mate? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, West Ham were really wild. You could hear yeah. it in their fans. Their fans were fuming at the fact that Burnley, yeah. who, do you know what as well? To a neutral fan, we are horrendous. Like, to a, to a neutral fan, you can't think of anything worse than Burnley in the Premier League, let alone this version of Burnley that's coming. Because this version of Burnley that we've got now is horrendous. Like, no backbone, no spine, no clear identity. Like, fair enough. Performance was better first half. Yeah, performances mean nothing now. Like, perform, we've been, we've gone past the point where we can say performances are better. We need points, and if we're not picking up points, especially from a two-goal lead at half time, then that. If you want to paint the picture of oh, it's a lot better. We still got a point. You took a point at the start of the day. Yeah, fair enough. At half time, we were two and a lot, and we were cruising in the game. They weren't showing anything. We weren't worried, and then oh. Out of nowhere, it's 2 2 because we're soft, easy to roll over, easy to beat. So, yeah, shame for the day. Understand his, understand his reasoning for doing it. Clearly, didn't work. Need points, and it's not good enough, really. Yeah, it's 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 a point well made that obviously we can understand the reasoning, but as you put it better than me, Sam, when you said we don't have the personnel to do it, yeah, that Josh Brownell isn't that man to come on uh, and try and shore it up. And I agree, I think that is part of the reason why we lost that match. Company med changes, both tactically and in personnel, that invite a pressure. But just to play devil's advocate, like I said, I've, I've already said I agree with you two, they they made a couple of changes as well at half time. So he brought on Alvarez yeah. and Phillips. Uh, he brought on Antonio for War Prowls. War Prowls and mm -hmm. Phillips were non existent. I felt that Cullen was doing that to them rather than them not being very good. Cullen was once again fantastic in the middle. But just to play devil's mm -hmm. advocate, obviously Antonio, especially, he comes on and he created an outlet for them and he ran at the ball with that with direct. So is it is it fifty percent the changes that Moyes made and fifty percent the 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 mistakes that company made, or, or or is it or is it more of one than the other? Got to give credit to Moyes, I think. Really. Yeah, but also to. the quality of the quality of players that they can bring on compared to quality of players that Vinny can bring on. Um, yeah. They're going to change the game, aren't they? Antonio is a superb player. Yeah. As, as I know Ings isn't what he was, but he's superb, isn't he? Uh, we know what they can do. And yeah, but just how got bad was he at the turf mm. this season? Mm, I know, but they've just got that bit of quality that we that we don't essentially. And I think, like you said, uh, credit to Moyes, but also the, the, just the caliber of player they brought on. Um, established Premier League players. It's yeah. just, I think that was a difference. Yep, I agree with that. To be fair, I do, I do think we've got to give Moyes credit for changing it, but I just don't get why companies changed it. Like, yes, if he's reacting to something that they've done, I'd understand. Say, like, if he brought Browdell on at fifty minutes because he's like, oh shit, they've just brought two players on here. I need to try and shore it up. I'd get mm. it more. I'd understand more. But like I said, anybody who knows anything, you don't change. You're sad when you're doing so well. I, and even if it might not necessarily be the reason why we conceded that goal so early, which I don't think it is, it, it not doing something so silly and making a mistake when everything's going well, sort of like gets rid of the chance of us to say things about the decisions that you've made. And that's what annoys me. I just, I just can't fathom what's gone through his head then because we know we don't have the personnel to do it. So he mm. surely knows, unless he's just trying to prove points by this is what I want to do because I know a lot of people which I don't agree with See, are saying he's, right. he's making decisions for company rather than for Burnley so, right. so I didn't want to get into this but I feel I've got to touch on it a little bit so he, he said in his press didn't he about it'll come good eventually I think there's a little bit of that of him trying to yeah. say look I told you so so like eventually yeah. when it does come off he can say see I told you so but it also comes back to that that I've said this season about um, not like he's sort of what, what, what's the point I'm trying to say? It's like he's sort of reluctant. It's not these reluctance to change, but it's like his stubbornness to. I've, I've sort of I can't get the word. He wants to I'm stick with the same players. He wants to yeah. stick with the same players to almost say like, look, like waiting for that. So eight games will be rubbish, and then that one game where they play well, I got told you like. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, mean. that it's that it's that side of it. It's that so that it can. He's sort of trying to force it. Do you know what I mean? It's like he's sort of trying to force it to work. 
where it's that oh that's that's what that's what I was trying to say. It's that where I said it earlier in the season about he's trying to play a system but doesn't have the players for it. And instead of adapting the way he's playing for the players he's got, it's it's that again. He's trying to he's trying to play a way that he wants Burnley to play or he wants his teams to play, but he doesn't have the players to do it and he's not recognising that. And that's been the, that's that's been what it is all season. I got there eventually. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day it's been a long day Neil um, but yeah no I, I agree I, I just feel like I don't get the substitutions and not only that and I want to go into it a little bit deeper and not only did he bring Josh Brown along at half time when it's not even a shade at Josh Brown or me saying that I just don't understand why he's changing it at half time like when we I was going to say do you think there's an element of him, of, of him being sort of club captain where he has to play but he's not club captain is he I, I, I probably just I don't know I just yeah, think it's company trying to no over analyze it I just think it's company trying to over analyze it myself yeah. um, I mean if it comes out tomorrow that um, um, there was an injury fair enough but I'm sure we would have heard by now yeah we would have and, 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 and even and, <laughs> again playing devil's advocate but even then like I'm not 100% sure I'd be like yeah fair enough because I'm not 100% sure he may have seen the backlash and thought well fuck I'll have to say something now that that that'd just be my thought process uh, in that scenario to be honest um but another thing that annoyed me is going five at the back um on what the hour mark or something like that why has he done that again like this is what I mean about him making these again it's no shade at Delcroix but there's a reason, as we've said plenty of times on the show, there's a reason why you cost a million quid. And it's and, and and again, he didn't really do anything wrong. But company said, right, go five at the back and sit in deep. We know that our defence is about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. As soon as there's a bit of pressure, they go into crack. And all right, the, the pressure took longer than it than it usually does. It didn't come to what the 94th, fifth minute or whenever it was when, when they scored. But we all knew as soon as we went five at the back that we were going to concede and we weren't going to win that match. So again, it's another decision that company made, Sam, for me that I just I, I just found baffling. Like, why, when we have been so bad at defending all season, has he then said, right, let's defend and try and see this game out? I mean, mate, all you need to do is look at the substitutions that we actually made. Like, that's that's all all it really screams is we brought Goodmanson, Brownell, and Del Quaron, and in comparison to them bringing Ings, Antonio, and Alvarez on. Like, there was only one team that was going to really go for it in the second half because our substitutions... I mean, we left Benson on the bench, Amduni on the bench, Trezor on the bench, Rodriguez on the bench. So they're four attacking players that you could have thrown in there just to change things up going forward or add Benson in when you tune nil up and just say, you know, everybody... We've all talked about Benson being a, you know, a, a substitute player, bringing him on, letting him have an impact off the bench. Bring him on. We're two nil up. Like, what, what's the worst that can happen? You know, yeah. We're only going to go from strength to strength. Bringing him on, defensively going five at the back and bringing those three on. That their players, Del a centre half, stroke left back. Goodmanson played under Dyche. Brownell played under Dyche. They play systematic football, and what they're there to do is play a role in a defensive setup. All right, yeah, fair enough. Brownell. Has you know um, played well in that attacking midfield role, but their their defensive substitutions. So instantly the subs already paint the picture on what we plan to do. Going five at the back, we haven't played that all season. We just yeah, haven't. Just like we've never gone five at the back. It's not in. It's not the philosophy in the way that you, you you try to play. You've only done it because you've actually genuinely what you've done is you've looked at the game. We've been two goals up for the first time in God knows how long. And you've seen your ass and gone, oh, I, I, I clearly need to, to salvage this. And what you've actually done is you, you've actually self-sabotaged yourself and done a wrong for your own back. Because as they've made those substitutions, you've made not likewise substitutions with lesser quality players and told them to sit back and defend. Yeah. Mikel Antonio has, has Manchester City centre halves on strings. You know, sometimes because he's so big and so hard to get hold of. So what is he mm -hmm. going to do against Charlie Taylor, Delqua, Estevate? Like, it's just, we, it, it, all it said to me today was that we have such a clear lack of A, discipline, and B, quality. We don't have the quality. If if we're bringing, if we're still bringing on Goodmanson and Brownell next season, or they're starting in the team, because I, I, they've just been around for what feels like so long and I, I I love Goodmanson and I still do like Brownhill but these are players that aren't 
that don't affect the game for us. They just don't. The thing is, though, we know in- we know Brownhill's good in the championship, don't we? He's good in the championship, but that is his yeah. ceiling. So it's it's worth keeping around for that. But then I don't know, though. I don't know. Like, he's what do you do? Do you take up a one year extension for for what? Like to to if we do bounce back and stay up, then what? Like, yeah. do you just you sell him for like what? five six million pound if somebody takes a punt on him not many teams in the championship have that people in the premier league will know that his level is the championship so no one's going to take a punt for him up there like i just i just don't see i don't see where we go with him i still really like him like i do i I agree with you i think if we go down into the championship we could easily play that 10 role but it's moving forward after that like i just feel like yeah club does need club does need to to move on from that i think yeah like just evaluate the situation, it's, see what you actually want from it. Yeah, it's like they've, they sort. We know he's good at the championship, and he's mm. had a couple of cracks at the Premier League now. Neither I would say neither time in the Premier League. I know Nadashi played in the wrong system and and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but he's yeah. had a couple of cracks at the Premier League now, and it hasn't worked. So maybe next time, if it is if it is the idea that we'll we'll reset and go again, then maybe it's time to move on from him. Like we know he's good in the championship, but we know that that's as far as he's going to take us. So maybe it's time to move on. But, I mean, we've yeah. done it with everybody else. So this, I mean, like we've, I mean, I, and this is the point that I am, I'm like, I always go back to it without, because again, it's not, it isn't just Browner. Like I'm not just like slandering Browner, but like Zareri and Benson, like they were two of our best players last season, and now not getting into the team. Like, yeah, how how can those two not fit the system and not get into the team? But then Josh Browner can play so badly all the way through the season, and still get game time, and yet we're all worried yeah. this this season. That are going into next season, that we're going to lose two of our best players, that are two of the most exciting players that we've seen in recent times as Burnley fans. Yet no one's worried about what's happening with Brownell because the club can either pick up his one-year extension or ship him off and get him get rid of him for free. And either or, no one's really like if we keep him, all right. If we get rid of him, no one's really that bothered. So why, why put all the time and effort into keeping Brownell on the team and and still working him in and giving him the captain's armband and shipping those two off and not giving him games? Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. I've just seen a comment there a bit back about um, Trezor as well. It's like you know, it's like you were saying earlier. Like, is he is he getting the sort of Benson treatment now? Because at two 0 up, I think when Burnley was sort of on the front foot and West Ham were a bit rattled. Bring Trezor or Benson on and let them run at them, let them have a go in a, yeah. where there's, it's not as much pressure that. to change the game. We don't need you to come on and change the game. We need you to come on and just express yourself. And, and yet he, he didn't, did he? Yeah, exactly. And it's, I was just thinking, someone put a comment up in there and I just thought, yeah, Trezor, yeah, he didn't bring Trezor on. So, yeah. But it's um, like, like yeah. for me, just like, look at the, look at, like, at what point do you turn around and say, it's the game for Trezor? Like, this is, this yeah. is the, like, these are the, these are the questions that annoy me this season. It's like, okay, we've done it where we're 3-0 down. Bring Trezor on for five minutes, see what he can do. Nothing, because he's got five minutes and we're 3-0 down and yeah. no one's bothered. We've seen yeah. us in the middle of a draw, doesn't bring him on. Like, we're drawing 1-1, something like that. Brings him on for five minutes again, doesn't affect the game. Shock, vidra treatment once again. Now, you're 2-0 up at half-time. You're cruising in a game where someone's not giving you any pressure whatsoever, but you know they're going to make changes. So what you need to do to combat, combat, com, what am I even saying? Combat their positive <laughs> changes. It's also while changing the system, make a positive change as well. Change it up. If they've been, if they've been watching, who was it? Brun Larson and Vitinho. Swap Vitinho out. Swap Brun Larson onto the right hand side. Put Trezor on the left and give the defenders another headache for a different type of player. But what we actually did was change him for a less uh, less able player, change the system completely, and then our system went so defensive that we just we couldn't get anything going. You had Fafana just isolated up on his own. You had Odebert yeah. taking touches in midfield, four men on his back. Like We, we just had no... In the second half, we self-sabotaged ourselves because what we should have done was go... It, Tweak it slightly, go a little bit more defensive, but just give people the license to go. Give, tell the yeah. wingers to still go and tell Vitinho can run for 120 minutes, like let alone 90. Just tell him to run around a lot. But honestly, mate, I, we need points now. So a good first half means nothing. So it's just disappointing again. 
Yeah, can't disagree with that. Keep the comments coming in. I will dip in and out of them, obviously, um, as we go on. Martin's in the chat. He says, hi, guys. How's it going? Good. Thanks, mate. Hope you're well. Uh, JK says, was it our changes or, uh, their, or, or theirs, though, that made the difference? Calvin Phillips made Cullen and Berg look like prime. Um, Xavi and Iniesta. Yeah, obviously, I'm going back to the comments here a little bit. Obviously, we have discussed that. Uh, James Elad says, evening, guys. Good about that. But sort of coming from a miles away, that's pretty much what we're saying, isn't it? Yeah. Claret and Blue 1882 says, we tried to defend the lead, but forgot that we can't defend exactly that. That's that's what I don't understand, uh, to be honest. Harry says, credit to you guys for still creating the content this year. Felt very unattached to the team this year. Yep, so do we, mate. But... Yeah. We are here for the long haul for you guys. We've been doing it for like four years now, mate. Hopefully we'll be here for another four years. Uh, Mark's EAS says, every single time we have a good first half, company changes stuff around and we draw or lose. This is getting ridiculous now. And you know what, lads? I'll, I'll bring you two back in here uh, again. It was very similar to the game at West Ham, was uh, at West Ham, sorry, at home against West Ham because we played a very good half in the first half and then towards mm. the end of the second or halfway through the second, he made some negative changes, invited the pressure, and then it all happened again. And I've said time and time again, I will still give company the time because I know he's a young manager still learning. But then he's doing things again and again and again that kind of probably tell me that maybe he isn't learning. I mean, I say that as a 36-year-old man, and he's a 37-year-old man, and I'm sat here talking to you two in my spare room while he's a Premier League manager. So it's... <laughs> probably a little bit ridiculous for me to call him out so I'm not going to fully do it but it just sometimes does stuff and I just think why you've done that before and I've said it again time and time again I don't understand why he's not learning like insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results but yeah um, Mecca that surely I just... someone surely someone in his team though I mean Bellamy's not shy at coming forward is he surely he is not that much of an uplicker that he's not going to stand up to company and say look this isn't working boss don't do this like company's yeah. going to come out with some mad ideas, and surely someone in his staff can say that. I don't think that's going to work. Surely they can see it as well. They're not all yeah. that this far is, up his this is, backside that they're not going to stay up. This is exactly my argument, though, right? and this is where you can, like I've said, and it's no disrespect to anybody that is company out, but it's like, like I've said on this podcast so many times, like you can have your opinion on why company shouldn't be the manager. But he does try and change things. He does. The Trafford situation, like, we've all sat here and we've all gone on about the Trafford situation and stuff like that. And it makes sense. Like, we should have changed Trafford around at some points this season because he's been poor. But in other areas, he has made the changes. All it outlines to me is we don't have the quality because every change we make, it's either worse or just as bad. And when he does change the system, like he has done, he's taken Amdouni out, and that's been five or six games. And then we had a conversation last week that Odder Bear played better in there. We've had a conversation of who should play there, who plays on the right, who plays on the left. We've had injuries this season as well. We've had Bayer out nearly all the season. We've had Cole Osho, who's been out for ages. We had Benson, who was injured at the start of the season for ages. That's the only, for me, that's the only issue now that I have with company's team selection is that he's not even including Benson in it all. But... Mm. It just outlines to me that there is a clear lack of quality in the team. No matter what he changes or how he changes it, it doesn't seem to work. The only change that has actually fully worked is a, is a striker. Foster started the season really well, went away for a little bit. Jay Rodriguez clearly wasn't it. We've brought Fafana in and Fafana's at the ground running. He can't stop scoring. He looks brilliant. All these other changes that we make, it, there's just we they're just not good enough none of them and i still i i, I still agree with people though like Trezor should get more game time and and stuff like that but it it just doesn't i, I just think there's a, there's a lack of quality in the team and i, I think it's a, a lot more down to the lack of quality rather than him not changing things all the time because everybody can bring up the same two or three examples of where he hasn't changed it but look at the yeah. 10 15 where he has like do you know what I mean? Yeah, my, my issue is though, he always reverts back to type like he did today. He just he just suddenly just went negative. And yes, he's changed the team selection. Although it's Scott says here on screen, I disagree. He was forced to change with JB and I'm doing it as play for months terrible. And there is scenarios, as you've just mentioned there, where Trafford is still not being played and Benson isn't still being played. But he has tried to change things up. Order bearing <coughs> the 10 has well did work against Bournemouth to a certain extent. 
but he was quite poor today. And there's a comment earlier on from everyone's favourite Scotsman, uh, Andrew Blythe. He says, hi, guys, sorry I'm late. No issue with trying to protect with the five at the back, but why take off one of our players that can create a chance? I think at this stage, that was when he did take order bear off, wasn't it? Now, my only argument was <laughs> I'd have took him off at half time. Mm-hmm. So I agree. I, 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 I disagree with that, Andy, because I would have taken him off because I thought he was poor today, order bear. And I'm not digging him out because he's a young lad and he's been fantastic all season. He's going to have bad games. But if he's if he if he's going to take him off later in the game, I'd have took him off earlier in the game. Is what I'm trying to say because I just thought he wasn't great in the first half. And despite for how well Cullen and Sander were playing, order bear was giving it away a bit much. So I personally would have. Would have would have done that a little bit earlier, but keep your comments coming in as well. Uh, David Gill says lack of quality. That's VK's fault though for signing these players. The team is worse than last year's. Uh, David Gold says, guys, this is just rinse and repeat week in week out. Uh, we have to accept we don't have the quality to compete in this league, and VK is out of his depths. I-, I agree with you, mate. Like we have said in the group chat so many times, haven't we, lads? Like there's nothing new to discuss. It's just the same no. things, the same players. That like, we get that, mate. I gen- we genuinely get that. We pull our hair and our teeth out mm-hmm. about new things to discuss. Uh, honestly, mate, I, I do apologise for that. Um, but Ben Keg says it goes back to the thing he said when we won the league. What, first in the I think we all need to do twenty first. Go on, Neil. Sorry. I, sorry, I think we all need to just watch some of these from last season, just to just to cheer ourselves up, just to sort of like, just you know what I mean, just watch sort of like from February to sort of like May, just watch some of the full time shows from last year. Yeah, just do that instead. Yeah, yeah. Shall I just start restreaming them instead? Just restream them. Honestly, yeah. I'd so much rather do that. The thing is, though, like yeah. just to go back to the comment of like of the the lack of quality. And it's VK's fault. Like, I do get that. But there's so many more people involved in a football club. Like, he's not the only person that said, I want Odder Bear, and they've just gone with a blank check and said, go sign him. Like, you have. No, the do, owner do you, who's um, clearly, He's do you clearly watch got the overlap. The mate? What's that? Do you, do you watch the overlap with uh, yeah, yeah. Gary Neville? Did you see Solskjaer's mm. transfer thing where he said the club came to him? He, so he said, oh, we need a striker. And the club came to him and said, here's a list of five, pick one. I wonder if it's that sort of thing. Yeah. Because obviously Alan Pace well, is into that AI scout thing, isn't he? And data and all that sort yeah, of stuff. So whether yeah. I mean, I guess we won't know until so, so whether they've gone to company and said, right, so so these are the five players for this area. These are the five from here. Which one do you want? I wonder if it's that sort of thing. But it's like, look at, um, I always go back to that um, Sunderland documentary. You know when they, they signed Will Grigg mm, and they yeah. had a long list of strikers. They said, we need a striker and they had a big long list of names and Ibrahimovic was at the bottom and everybody was absolutely creasing at it. Like, yeah, that that's what it's like for a lot of football clubs. They basically say, here's a top target, here's, here's the bottom target and here's everybody in between, pick one. What could have happened, and we don't know this, we're just speculating, but what could have happened is the top player went, the other one went, and we ended up with the person in the middle in a couple of positions. We don't know mm. what actually, we don't actually know what's happened. All we can say is that the players that we don't, that we have right now, don't have the quality to stay in the Premier League. I don't, I just, I always struggle with that notion of just going to the manager and being like, it's his fault. He's picked, he's brought these players in. That's, if that's, it's not FIFA career mode. You don't just sit there, put an offering, and then the player comes in. Like, there's a lot more to a transfer than you know. You've got a head of recruitment. You've got um, director of football. All your scouts go away and do all that type of stuff. They all come back to you and tell you all the information about a player. You watch film about a player and all that, all the stuff like that. Like, when, company won't be. He'll be a big part of it. Don't get me wrong, but he's not. He's not. He'll be the final word, but he's not all of it. So. If we've signed Aaron Ramsey for £13 million and it hasn't ended up working, I wouldn't turn around him. and be like, company, you've brought him in and you you know, this is now where we are. It's not all well, also company. company's not the one who, who negotiates the transfers either. So the fact that he has paid X amount for a player, that's not a company exactly. either. He would have just said he would have just exactly. given the go ahead, yeah, I'll have him, and then the rest is down to the board to negotiate. So it's fair yeah, play, that's not a company the, either. The director of football would not come back to company and say, we've had a £13 million bid accepted, do you want him? Like, he'd yeah. say, no, I want the player. And then they'd go away and then put yeah. the money in and then you'll say, oh, we've got Aaron Ramsey, fantastic. My only thing with that is, like, 
I, I just think it all comes back to the same thing. We don't have the quality of player. Whereas the squad that we could go into, um, the squad that we could go into the championship with, it could be unbelievable. Like we could have Kolyosha, we could have Odd Bear in the 10, we could have Bergen Cullen, Foster. Maybe if the final likes us enough, we might be able to put a cheeky bid in with him and see if he'll come down. But after he's playing so well, I think that's probably 100% we're not going to get him. Um, mm-hmm. but the amount of money that will go down with the game, we'll have a lot more money to reinvest in the squad. Hopefully the club wisens up and realises we need a left back. This time, so please buy one. Um, we need a better right back. Um, these centre house that we've got, you've got Bayer, who's a pretty decent centre half, who's been injured for ages, and then a couple of like just mannequins that don't move, like Dar O'Shea, ship him off, and then reevaluate the centre back position and bring you know bring some more players in and stuff like that. Add some more quality around what we've already got. Build on the young players. Aaron Ramsey's level was the championship. See how that works out, and then just go from there. We're in a good position to bounce back with the finances and the players that we have and the players that we can sell. We can sell Amdouni for a decent-ish amount. We can sell Trezor for a decent-ish amount. We're not in the worst position when we're going down. Oh, it's not yeah, just fees either, is it, mate? It's um, There'll be players leaving like uh, J-Rod, Cork probably, so we free their wages yeah. up as well. So that goes in the budget, doesn't it? So yeah. We've got loan players. McNally's coming back. Twine's yeah. coming back. Zerurri's Scored back. a deep deal like, yesterday, if, if want- McNally. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, McNally scored, Zaruri scored. Like, just this is what I mean, mate. Like, we're in a good position when we go down. But talking about this season now and talking about the players that we have, none of us have the same affiliation to the players that we had last season. And none of us particularly seem to like any of these players. Like, let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, there's a lot of criticism that you can put on a lot of the new players that have come in. Whether or not they don't play, or it is somebody like an Aaron Ramsey who's played like five or six games all season. We spent £13 million and it's a waste of money. But next season, it's not like you've... you've Right now, it's annoying because you can highlight and say we spent £13 million on Aaron Ramsey, barely plays. In this season, it's a clear lack of quality and he's part of that problem because he doesn't have the quality yeah. for this league. If we're going to the Championship, you know, it's gonna, you know he's going to play better. Obviously, I know he's got his injury and stuff like that, but... When we go down, it, it won't be highlighted as much because you'll have a good player who's a good asset and you can build up and he's in a better league to to experiment in, as we've said so many times. So I think we're in a better position for next season. But this year, I, I, honestly, I don't know about you a lot, but I've just been miserable all, all season long. It's been such <laughs> I know, a and, season, and, it? and that is why, obviously, you've started talking about next season because this season... <laughs> Hasn't been fun, but on, on, based on next season and the players that we have, I do, I, I do agree with you. I've tried to argue that point on Twitter many a time that I do feel that we are in a better can't position. Argue on Twitter, mate. You f- can't no, argue can't. On Twitter. Sorry, to make that make the point very well on Twitter, but again, you still get shot down. Um, but I've tried to say several times that we are in a better position now this season for next season than what we were the season we went down for next season, if that makes sense. I've worded it horrifically. Um, but mm. the fact that Tarkovsky were leaving, Nick Port were leaving, Ben Mee were leaving, uh, Ashley Westwood obviously left a little bit later on. Uh, Chris Wood left a little bit earlier, but, you know, Corner left. We lost, McNeil left. We lost the entire span of the team and, and mm. about 70, 80% of the starting <laughs> 11. Um, so I do agree with that. It still point annoys that me that we only got 10 million for position. Pope, you know. 10 million for Pope, it still bugs yeah. me that. Yeah, worth yeah. at least 40 50. Yeah, yeah, as Andrew says, much better position, correct, Joe. I've tried to make that point on Twitter, Andy, um, but I always get shut down as you do all the, the time only, on Twitter. Yeah, on, the yeah. only concern with, with, with all this, I, I, I agree with that element, but um, I, I players like Zeruri, players like McNally, are they we think, oh, yeah, are they're going to want to play for us? Are they going to want to play? Are they going to be a yeah, bit like, I mean, nah, fuck off? You know, what I mean, you've not, you've not trusted me once, so I'm not going to bother. You know what I mean? I guess we'll never know, but the profession, the professional footballers at the end of the day, so you would hope that they'd want to be playing for a team who, who, who let's be honest, will be at the top end of the table fighting for it. Like, would he rather... It might be, but it rather, might be the would manager stay at Hull? Would he rather stay at Hull and be playing for a team who might be battling for, for top seven, top six, or would he rather be at a team that their ambitions to win the league again? So yeah, but as a professional well footballer, you also might just want to play. It might be a case of I could be at Burnley in top six yeah. but not get a game under a manager who doesn't trust me or I could play mid-table but I'll be playing every week. So there's that argument as well, isn't there? Yeah, so fair, no, though, I do agree with that. Loan, with, with some of the loan players, that's what the loan system's 
for is to develop players that aren't at the level. So yeah. McNally and Twine, which, weren't at which the level is where the Trafford should have been, which is hundred percent. Yeah, where exactly. Should have been. It's where Zaruri shouldn't be. Like, yeah, in, in my, it's where Zaruri shouldn't be, and where Twine, McNally, and all the other players are out alone. It makes sense for the whole reason yeah. as to why we have the loan system is for the likes of Twine and McNally. They weren't good enough for the championship when we were in the season when we were working through the season last season we outlined that straight away mcnally didn't play any games other than in the cup and then we shipped him out on loan we knew twine we wanted twine in the team and we knew he could play a role last season mm. obviously the injury hindered that and in my opinion i also think if he was if he didn't get injured he would have had that number 10 spot and brownell would have been the rotation and brownell wouldn't have had the season that he had um but then when we went into the premier league it should too big of a jump for Twine, so yeah, I I think we're in a good position as well with those players. Like we have a we have a number ten already in Twine that we can put in, or, or another winger if he ends up going back to his left winger days, like he was at MK Dons. Like we're in a decent position with that. Like like I say, we've got Cole Osha, who I I could see somebody taking, but I don't think they will. Like, it's the same with Oliver. Like I could see why somebody would want him. Yeah. Whether that happens or not, I I'm can't not see sure. Coley in the first window. I can't see him going in the first window. Maybe yeah, maybe if they have a re- if they hit the ground running and they have a really good yeah. season, we might struggle to keep hold of them. But then again, yeah. like, would you want to leave and go to a team struggling in the Prem or, or, or stay stay at Burnley potentially win the league? So it's a lot of a lot of ifs and buts for next season. But I do think mm. going all the way back to the start at that point that we are in a better position at this stage than what we were. Um, the season we went down. But yeah, keep your comments coming in. Uh, one on screen there from it, Scott. He says, I think we will see the players loaned out to Europe in the hope that we can recoup some of the fees we paid. Specifically thinking about Amduni and Trevor. Yeah, kind of a similar to what we've done with Veghorst, uh, I think, with that one. But um, some more stuff to discuss on this game in a minute. Obviously, we've got all the the, the decisions and stuff and, uh, and some positives because there were some good performances from players in there. Um, but I just want to remind everybody that um, Burnley's sleeve sponsor, Uphold, um, has got some exciting news, um, as we mentioned in previous shows. They have now launched a limited edition Burnley FC Uphold card, giving fans a chance to show their support <laughs> home and away. The card is free and comes with a host of benefits, including the ability to spend in any currency anywhere in the world where MasterCard is accepted with no foreign transaction fees, competitive exchange rates and easy integration with Google or Apple Pay. Get your card today at www.uphold.com forward slash Burnley FC. But that's not all. When fans use their card for the first time, Uphold will donate £5 to Burnley in the community, supporting the Burnley family both on and off the pitch. Numbers are limited, so again, visit www.uphold.com slash Burnley FC to get your card today. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, and yeah, it's great to see big companies like that, like I said on Twitter the other day, uh, putting stuff into the community charities. Um Neil, you said earlier before the show started, obviously Danny Ings had a disallowed goal before the real goal, um, yeah. and it was because of this. Now, I, I would like to... Offside's offside, right? Like, But I... And that's what a lot of people just always end up dismissing this um, debate. They just say, offside's offside, though, so he's offside. Like, what... I just don't get what the advantage is there, like... We're splitting airs at this stage, so yeah, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain mm. at all. I'm happy it was disallowed, but <laughs> no. I but this is like why the um... off sides, honestly, I really no, don't. No. But yeah, you said you said you'd think it should have stood, or were you referring to something else? No, no, I think it should have stood, but but I followed that up by then saying it's about time we had a bit of luck <laughs> with Vargo and our way. Uh, but that's what the um, Wenger rule coming in is for, isn't it? There has to be daylight between them now. So they're not going to be splitting hairs that. anymore. I completely I'm, agree with that. I'm but all then for again, it, mate. It favours favors attackers. But then you've got... You'll just end up splitting hair on the other side. Well, yeah, you'll have that. Mm. But then you've got um, you've got the Wenger rule coming in to favour attackers to try and make the game more exciting. But then you've got VAR finding any possible reason why it exactly. shouldn't be a goal they'll to just, take the joint out of it. They'll just be splitting hairs. No. They'll yeah. just be splitting hairs on um, the other side. But yeah, but that situation there that you just put up, the situation there that you just put up that wouldn't be offside under the Wenger ring because there's no uh, there's no gap. That never right? used so, when we were growing up. That wasn't offside. That would that no, would no, have been wasn't. seen as in line. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly how it's going to go back because there has to be there has to be a gap between the, the the attacker and the defender. So it's going to be better next year, but obviously that doesn't help us now. But um, as much as I think that should have stood, we've had plenty of decisions not go our way uh, that have cost us points this year. So it's about time we got one. In all fairness. 
Yeah, as Duncan Fisher said, VAR sorted us out today and we still conceded anyway. Yeah, we yeah. had a penalty <laughs> shout as well that David Moyes wasn't very happy about. Now, I know before people say you can't really see it, it on a still. Hand. You can clearly see it hitting mm. his hand. But yeah, as Sam says, he does head it towards his hand. But Moyes is not happy. But I well, I this, feel that one would have been harsh, well, yeah. if I'm honest. This, this is the thing, right, that does my head in with VAR. There's no clear rule... This is my point. So everyone is always open to interpretation with every single decision that gets made. It yeah. is so annoying. Like he's headed the ball onto his hand. In what world from there to there is that ever going to get given a penalty ever? And then you've got David Moyes, who's in the game, who gets more help from officials than we do as fans is sat they're coming onto live on a live television and going, I can't believe that's yeah. not a penalty. I can't, mate. Shut mm. up. It, what are you on about? How w- would that ever? You've had an awful decision go against you, and every single Burnley fan will back you with that. That that is not offside, and we and we still like that comment says we still couldn't get anything from the game. We still conceded anyway because we're rubbish. You might as well have had it. We're not getting out of the position that we're in. You might as well have had three points. You might as well have just gifted you it and given you two goals right at the end and VAR not wipe it yeah. off. But for him to come out and sit there and moan about that, oh, my life, honestly. I, I, and uh, it's boys, the same with all VAR decisions. Yeah, Moyes is under pressure, though, isn't he? So I think he's just clutching it at, at what you can at the minute. Cause, to uh, be fair, really. lads, like, I agree with what Sam's saying. There shouldn't be this grey area it should be black and white. Like the offside rule, it is black and white. I don't agree mm. with it, but it's black and white. Like we know he's offside there because that part of his sleeve is a little bit more advanced than our last defender's sleeve. So therefore, well, but obviously with you two being into your NFL, if I remember rightly, I'm not into my NFL myself, but if I remember rightly, didn't they, when they brought in all this video technology, didn't they rewrite a lot of their rules to get rid of all the grey areas so stuff like this wouldn't be mm-hmm. happening? Like, why can't we do that with the yeah? So, rules? any so any, yeah, like, well, essentially what you said, any grey area was then sort of looked at, and then if there was one, they removed it by adapting, yeah, exactly. But why can't we do that? just to Let's just to that. confirm what you've said there? So, this this is this is removing the grey area from what we've just seen there. So, this is the actual definition of the Wenger offside law. If the attacker's entire body completely overtakes the last defender, it's offside. Otherwise, it's not offside. Is it? So that is going black and white, and that's that's much better for next season. Doesn't help us now, obviously, but next season is much better. Um, Saying that, obviously, there won't be any VAR next season. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Yeah. But yeah, maybe if I mean, if that comes through, hopefully they, they look at the others and they do that. Where something's got to happen in football, isn't it? Because I was saying this, I was saying this at work the other day that. Nobody talks about a quality goal anymore. Like nobody's, you know, nobody talks about um, a good bit of play or, or did you see that move or anything? It's always a decision. It's always VAR. It's always a ref has done something. And it shouldn't be that way. They, they, it's like they're the main stars of the show and they shouldn't be, you shouldn't even notice them. They should just be there just doing the job and then going. Um, so something's got to be done, I think. it's The VAR and referee decisions have, have been too prominent this year they're taking the joy out of it they really are even if you think they're winning they're taking the joy out of it you see on you see on sky sports and on bbc all the time before they pop up saying anything about what unbelievable game this was or what an unbelievable goal is they always put that tweet out with the question do you think this was a red card or did VAR get this right like i don't i never grew up thinking i want to be a referee I'd love to no. be a referee. So when you put that stuff out on Twitter, I'm sat there going, oh, I, I, hope, I hope they bring out that red card thing, refreshing feed, trying to find it. I don't care. I want to watch a worldly mm. goal. Like I, w- I want to yeah. see a goal over and over and over again for the next generation of kids that are coming through to watch football. And they can see a worldly goal and think, that's why I love football. This mm. and all that type of stuff is just spoiling it. It's and Haven't they got, um, haven't they got a bloody show so where they... They've got a show, haven't they, where they analyse ref decisions now. It's like a full feature, isn't it? Yeah, ref watch. Like, it's it's nonsense, that. Like, it it shouldn't be a thing. We shouldn't be talking about refs. We shouldn't know who they are. Like, we genuinely shouldn't even know referees' names. Um, But they're all sort of like... Like, we're not even, like... This is what irritates me, because, like, we're not even sat here, like, now, 
talking about the Burnley game. And why would you? It's been a rubbish season anyway. But like, I'd still rather talk about the game. I feel more mm. passionately about VAR than I do about the actual football being played. I know I, I, I have so much spiel to give about VAR and refereeing decisions, but I'm not bothered about talking about football. And, and that's mm. all come from the higher ups. That's come from that, that, that's that, that starts right at the top. And you, you can say, like, oh, you've, you've drawn 2 2, and you've had a miserable season, and, and you just don't want to talk about Burnley. Yeah, probably. But it starts at the top of football. It's all about money. It's all about who makes you money. It's all like you see it with City. There's a, there's a million miles between six, uh, the top six and seventh. So if there's a big gap between them and the top six are a million miles away with money, what are they going to be like mm. with Burnley, who are 19? We're, we're closer to Leicester than we are mid-table, money-wise and finances-wise. Like, and then it comes to VAR and we have decisions like the West Ham game where we should have had another penalty. Aston Villa game where we've had decisions go against us. Nottingham Forest start of the season. This one today is the only game where I genuinely think VAR has helped us. And I'm still not bothered. Even if we'd have won the game and I still sat back and gone, that's in no way, shape or form is that offside. I'll take it because we won the game, but yeah. I don't think it's right. And that's no. that's just what it is. And it's going to be like this in the... Well, look at... Um, until well, look at the the um, Liverpool City match. The biggest talking point is a penalty wasn't given. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Exactly. We're, not talk, exactly. we're not talking about the quality of football on, on, on display there. We're talking about a decision. It's just... It's doing me exactly. nothing. It really... It's part... It's just been this whole melting pot this year of just stuff to put you off on it, and VAR's yeah. there, and shit performances is there, and yeah, yeah, quite quite a few words said there about the fact that you know we're not we're not discussing worldly goals anymore. We're not discussing no. what we're doing is discussing VAR. There was a yeah. worldly goal for far. Yeah. That's got a banger. What a what an yeah. absolute goal that was, man! I'd love to show you all yeah. the clip. Obviously, I'm aware that you've all obviously seen it. But what a hit that was. Do you remember when Ashley yeah. Warren scored that goal at White Hart Lane a few years ago? It reminded me of that. He just thought to himself, you know what? Fuck it. I'm having a go. And it was an absolute peach. What yeah. a hit that was, son. Love it. It's, um, yeah, don't fall in love with a lone player, though, because he ain't going to be Oh, yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah. But he's some, he is some talent. He is some that. talent, him. Yeah. He's a very, very good player. Um, yeah, great goal. Cool. That's the only thing though, that like gives me some kind of solace though is like if there's the next the next wave of Chelsea, Tottenham, City youngsters that are available, we can bring them through on loan. Like somebody like an Oscar Bob, like yeah, could you bring him in on loan next season? Like because we've proven that you come to Burnley, the chances are you're gonna get a big move. Matson's now at Dortmund, he got rookie of the month. Uh, tell us back bagged again tonight. He's flying at the top of the Bundesliga, playing unbelievable. Howard Bellis is about to, um, you know, potentially go up with Southampton. And if Howard Bellis does go up with Southampton, they're not going to make the same mistake and not buy him. They're going to bring him in for a cup price. So yeah. mm -hmm. what what it does say is, and it goes back to the where, you know, where we are. Like, we are in a good position when we go down. We have got, we've got a manager that, has proved himself at that level with a squad that is substantially better than what we what we went down with last time, and he's still got the scope to build like he did last time. I'm I'm more in a position to back him at the uh, you know from a transfer standpoint next season as we've seen what he can do with you know a three four five million pound transfer because they've all turned into huge key parts of the club. So yeah, I, I'm I'm much more positive about next season, and I'm I'm ready to start. I've to be fair, I've been ready for a while, but I'm more ready to look to next season <laughs> than I am talk about this one because this one is boring. It's it's lacklustre. There's only it, ten games left now, Sam. Come on, that's what I mean. Do yeah. Ten I, more shows. I'm, sl I'm slugging. I'm slogging through each each game, and. You never ever thought that you'd be like that with like with our club, like. But that's what they've done to us this year. That's not our fault because us as fans, all we do is go watch and pay as much money and buy the shirts and all that type of stuff. It's not our fault that we've ended up turning up and we've been absolutely horrendous, is it really? But yeah. hopefully next season it gives us something else to smile about. The championship's much better as well. 
Yeah, fingers crossed we have a decent season next season. But as I've said before, I'm pretty confident that we will. We'll start wrapping it up soon. I do still need to get you man of the match shouts, though. But I just want to quickly ask uh, this question from Mick. Uh, obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, you won't be able to see it on the screen now. But in the comments on YouTube, you will see that Mick has got like a little turf cast crest uh, next to his name. A little blue turf cast crest. That's because he's a turf cast VIP member, um, which you can do. You can join now. It's just $2.99. Um, there's currently a few members on the channel. Um, you get stuff like early podcast release and things like that, uh, which is something I've, I've only introduced this week, to be fair. Um, but it is more so a thing probably for next season where I'm going to put some content uh, on for VIP members. I won't take any of the free content that we already do <coughs> away from anybody, though, because I love the stuff that we do, and uh, I think we do quite a lot. Uh, but maybe next year we're looking to doing more stuff for the members. But just a shout-out to Reese James, Mick, obviously, uh, Rad Sharma, Linda Ward, Justin Forrest, and Nathan Smith. Really do appreciate you helping the channel out. Obviously, Nick's uh, question, sorry, Mick's question there on screen is, if Foster was fit, do you think he would play Foster and Fafana together? Um, I think he'd try it, yeah. I, I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, Sam's shaking his head. I think he'd, I think he'd at least try it. But obviously, Sam, you don't think he would? It just systematically don't make sense. That's yeah, not, that's, I, I get it with that. I just feel like he would mm. just surely try it because he's tried everything else. There's nothing to lose at this stage. The thing He'll is, put Foster like, on the wing. Hmm, yeah. Probably would. He'd probably do something like you know, that. Four, you know, two, three, I mean, one. Foster out wide. Yeah. I just, I just, I just wouldn't simply because I'd, I'd much rather. I don't know. There's ten games left. It don't. I'm not interested. In the in the nicest possible way, I'm just, I'm not interested. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Though, like, you put it in now, and I'm like, like I'm gonna be like, oh, <coughs> yes, yeah, like, what does it? We have to win five games, right? And everybody else lose to either to even be in with a shout of not being the worst team in Premier League history, like. It, it just don't. It just honestly, I'm not bothered. And when we go down, no. I'd much rather sit systematically and play with the one striker and just stick with the identity that you want to play with. Yes, even though it's with players that aren't good enough right now, I'd rather just stick with that and just go from there. But I'm honestly, I'm just sure. not bothered. Right. I've got to say, my main takeaway from that is don't ask Sam a question again because he's just going to say, you know what, mate, I'll, in the nicest possible way, uh, I'm not bothered. <laughs> um, we've got a new member on the channel, a new member on the channel. So my spiel of talking about memories does actually work. Uh, thank you to, to PBDJDBJSJDJS. I who think does say he's sorted Pete. out his... Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Is it? Yeah, there you go. Pete, Pete B, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining the Turfcast VIP Club, Pete. Really do appreciate that. You can do that now if you want over uh, on YouTube. If you listen to this on the podcast, you can watch it back. Uh, as always, on YouTube, and then you can go and join there. Like I said, early early release for some shows. Um, got a big show coming up, actually, being recorded tomorrow, which will be released early for the members. Um, but yeah, more so for next season. And just to show you support for the channel, because you love us, I hope. Uh, we do work hard. Um, lads, then, obviously, I um, would like to end on a positive. Played well, didn't we, Sam? No, I'm joking. Yeah, no, I'm, re I'm not really going to do that to you, Sam. Oh. I'm not going to do that to you, Sam. I'm not going to do yeah, that We to need you, to wrap Sam. up. Don't get him off. We need to wrap up. <laughs> M. Max says, I will consider a membership, but you just ignore all my comments. Tell you what, mate, pay me and I won't. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I'll just say, what if you remember? Yeah. <laughs> get to be fair, in. M. Mac, I put, I put your comments up all the time. I do put all that. Uh, and now he's mentioned your name twice, so cough up. Yeah, come on. Where's your money? No, I'm joking. I'm not that type of content creator. Um, but anyway, man of the match shouts. Um, because I don't always do it when we get beat, and I didn't do it after the Bournemouth game, I don't think, because of just... How a troll. In fact, I think I did. I'm talking shit. Sometimes big, I don't do it. Sometimes I don't do it. In fact, I did do it. I did do it after Bournemouth. Because true, we didn't get it. It feels like it feels like we did, don't it? I know. Um, but after Bournemouth, I did because I remember everybody said Cullen and Claret Blue 1882. He's already put it in the chat. You're jumping the gun there, Claret Blue 1882. But for me, it's got to be Cullen again. So I do agree with that. MMA, uh, MMA. Claret Blue 1882 says for Farner slash Cullen. I'm going to go Cullen. Sam, are you going with me? Uh, I'm going to go Sanderberg. No, I, I thought they both played very well, mate. I, 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 
I think he's a very classy footballer. And, I think and he, he was dropping into set, yeah, in that was. first half. He was yeah. dropping into centre back as well. He was. Mm. He just. He was the CDM that we all thought we were getting before we realised that it was actually a cam that needed to adapt to be a CDM. Like, yeah, yeah. and now he's actually really, really good. So company was right on that one, yeah. Again. He's again, once again, good. he was right. <laughs> once again, he was right. Uh, Neil, your man of the match, please, mate. Uh, for Farner, just purely because uh, I like seeing goals, and that was a that was a belter, wasn't it? So, yeah, uh, it yeah. was an, it, it was a belter. Andrew Blythe says Cullen, as as we've already said, Clayton Blue 1882 says for Farner slash Cullen. Um, Claret Al says, Cullen. I've, I've missed one there. I've, I've skipped over a, a comment. Who is it? Oh, it's on M Mac. Uh, he says, he hasn't Cullen. Paid. He hasn't paid. <laughs> yeah. Duncan Fisher says, Cullen. Uh, Reese James, member of the channel, as you can see, little badge there. Uh, he says, probably Cullen again, but can see a case for Burge. If we somehow keep that midfield next season, it would be amazing. Could you imagine Cullen and Burge in the championship? I think Burton. I don't think he'll leave, but I think he might have a few suitors. We'll see. I know a few people are, are, are worrying about him uh, that he's going to leave. Um, but we'll start wrapping up there because Neil said he only had 45 minutes and we've done oh. over an hour. Um, so I do apologise for that, Neil, if, if you get in trouble. Uh, Kenny Bridges goes on to say, Cullen, no, well. good to see you in the chat, Kenny, good. as well. I know, know you're based in Canada. Um, so it's good to see you on the, sh um, on the live, mate. But lads, anything else you want to discuss before we wrap it up? No. Big yawn from Sam there, so I don't, I don't think he's, uh, no, I think he's no. desperate to get anything in there. I just miss the um, NFL. I just miss my Sundays. And honestly, such a sad life in it. Such a sad life. NBA, mate. Such a sad. You, have you, you two started this uh, NFL podcast yet? Then or what? Have you, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! What you whoa, I don't, you Come on, it's not a secret, is it? Come on, I, I want to know what's going on. The, the chat in the group chats, Dad. Unless you've had another group chat without me, an NFL, NFL cast. No, I just because it's because it's in the middle of the NBA season and it's draft season now in the NFL. It makes no sense now. It's a bit hard. Mm, it, we could uh, we could do it, but it'd be like it'd be a majority NBA show, and then we'd do like a a draft show, and it wouldn't feel like a mixture. Whereas later on down the line, we'll be so there. there you go. I, no, it's it's good to get it out there already. There's there's you have fans in here that will pay money, and it's you get released. more backstage planning chat like that. Oh, pay money. See, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. You'll be in the turf yeah. cash chat with us. Exactly yeah, yeah. that. Last one from me. Um, Clarence Blue 1882 says, Do we think Muris will stay next season? I no. don't, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think he's probably had enough of Burnley. Well, more Vincent Company. Uh, mm. As a true red says, I don't think Muris will want to stay. I agree. Um, I don't Andrew even... Blythe. Sorry, go on, Neil. I don't think he was even in the country last week. I know he, I know he was on the bench, but I don't know if he's even training because his Instagram's showing like sunny locations. Yeah, he's yeah. always on some random beach, and it? It, it looks yeah, a bit yeah. like Rowley Lake, but I'm pretty certain it's not. And people always see once a week, or at least once every other week, someone will DM me and say, "I've just seen Murich at Manchester Airport getting on a flight to Switzerland." That what am I, what am I supposed to do with that information? So every single week he is going away. So it's obviously, yeah, it's obviously one that um, I can't see him being here next season. Maybe he's having meetings with his agent. I guess we'll never know. Um, but lads, we'll leave it there. Sam, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Neil, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Andrew Blythe says, mm -hmm. nice show as always, guys. Have a good week, all three of you, and see you next week. Yes, thank and you, you, Andrew. Mate. Andrew, have a good week, mate. Um, I hope your drive down to the turf on Saturday um, is a good one, but thank you for being in the chat. Uh, if you've joined the live late, um, once I press end stream, <laughs> it does stay on YouTube for you to watch on demand as and whenever you want and if you'd rather listen to it on a podcast while you're driving to work tomorrow or a vacuum in the house or whatever it is walking the dog uh, then it will be up as a podcast pretty soonish as well but thanks everybody for watching thanks everybody for listening big thank you to sam big thank you to neil for coming on thank you for mick as well for another lovely comment says thanks like see you next week Clarence blue 1882 says great show guys always big up for the love thank you for coming in thank you to the new member um pete as well so i really do appreciate that as well but thanks everyone watching thanks everybody for listening and we will see you next time goodbye